Hey guys, I have an electric over hydraulic tilt back trailer. This is uh, for hauling equipment and cars. It also has a winch. Today we're going to take the battery out of this. We're going to eliminate it and we're going to connect this uh, hydraulic pump and winch directly to the truck. Stick around, let me show you how I did it. This is how we're doing it. These plug right into here. So typically, this runs off of a battery. The battery's always dead, because I don't use the trailer enough. Now I'm running right off of the truck. So here's the 250 amp circuit breaker. Here's the DINs connector, male and female. And here's the two aught welding cable that we're gonna need to do this. So this is the battery I had in here, and um, it, it, uh, it was a good battery, it's a thousand cranking amps, and um, you know, it just didn't last more than two years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to salvage it, I'm going to see if I can charge it and get it back to life again, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be salvageable. So this is the reason why I ended up doing this. Off she goes. As a desperate measure, I had installed this uh, solar powered um, battery ch trickle charger that was absolutely useless. Um, you know, I just didn't have anywhere to plug my trailer in. It might be good if you're recharging a kid's toy or something, but uh, definitely doesn't do anything to keep a car battery charged. I'm not even sure if it does anything at all. I'm gonna get you guys around the other side here so you can kind of see what I got going on. You see that right there? These here are inline circuit breakers, automatic circuit breakers. They're, they're like heaters. You know, they heat up and, uh, for overload protection. I think there's 90 amps here. And that's mainly for, for the winch. But I also have my, uh, my dump going through that. They very rarely ever run at the same time. So I got a little bit of work to do in here. This is where the battery hot used to come in because I have a switch on this side where I could shut off the battery, but it just wasn't working, man. So we're gonna, I mean, the switch worked fine, but it just wasn't working to, to try and save this battery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the hot from this side and we're going to have two cables, almost like booster cables. They're going to be long enough to get from here to the truck over there. When we don't need them, we'll just wrap them up and stick them in here. i got to remove that 20 amp line that I had coming in. From the truck side that is supposedly supposed to charge its battery. But I was always popping the breaker on that. Now, eventually I might get another battery for this. We'll see. I don't know, this just never worked right for me. And you know, I'm not the only one. There's, I know a lot of people that have dump trailers that run on a 12 volt battery and they all kind of have the same problem, you know? I'm gonna link to a, a channel, a, a video where a guy puts a relay in, uh, in his trailer box here. And what it does is it cuts off the 20 amp line coming off the truck anytime he uses um, the hydraulic power on his trailer. And uh, I thought that was a pretty smart solution. But the main reason why I'm doing this 
is because I was just getting tired of having to plug this into a battery charger. You know, I don't have um, a convenient spot to park this trailer next to a building with an electrical outlet. That's, that's my main problem here. So hooking up a, a trickle charger to it is really inconvenient as hell because it takes up the parking that I need next to the building, you know, running an extension cord and all that. Most of the time I'm in a real hurry, you know, I just want to unhitch my trailer. I don't want to have to worry about it. Doing it this way, I'll never have to worry about having a charged battery in this trailer again. That's the main reason why I'm doing this. Because when I get in something, I want it to work. I don't want to have to worry about, okay, am I going to be needing the trailer tomorrow? Do I have, you know, I don't use this trailer every single day. A lot of times it stays parked for a month at a time. So I don't want to have to worry about that. This way, I don't. I'm not sure if you can see this over here, but this is the circuit breaker. It's a 250 amp circuit breaker. This wire right here goes from the hot on the, on the battery here to one side of the circuit breaker. And then the other side of the circuit breaker runs out to the back of the truck. Okay, I have two batteries in this truck. This cable here goes out to the other battery. They're, they're linked together. The way the system works on this is that uh, it, treats, it treats these two batteries as if they're one battery. Um, there's no battery isolation between it. That's just the way the Ford does it. I have two aught wire gauge size for the cable. And this is stranded welding cable. Very good cable for carrying high amperage. It runs all the way out to the back and it's got silicone wire jacket. I had footage of me installing all this, but I lost it somehow. Okay, so we're gonna put these in. We painted our little mounting plate. Okay, there goes the red one. There goes the ground. Goes there. Goes there. Goes there. Goes there. Goes there. Now for the ground wire on the truck. Um, we don't need to run a ground wire all the way up to the battery. If we, uh, I'm just going to find a decent hole on the frame. I'm going to grind it clean, run a bolt through it, and run a ground strap to that. And that ought to give us the ground we need for back here. All right, and these are the bolts that actually hold the, uh, the terminal the end of the wire terminal to these nubs. And that's that. And this is what I call tech screws. They got a little drill bit on the end. These are great. I mean, you can go through eighth of an inch steel with these, no problem. I got some smaller ones here in, in this hand, but uh, to go through the eighth of an inch, I'm gonna need some beefier ones. These will do the trick. Pretty much got to attach these wires first before I screw this bracket up because it's going to be hard to get to it otherwise. My dog wants to help. She's such a good doggy. Here we go. Let's get started. That ought to do it. And there we go. So that right there is the back. You can see this is the hot and this is the, the neutral, positive, negative. 
This is the ground strap that's going to go to the frame. And there we go. And this, this goes in there like that. Just got to do the ground. And I'll be back with you guys. Now I'm running right off of the truck. I'm very happy with the setup. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments below if you think my sound is, is better than it's been. I got a new wireless mic set up and uh, I, I noticed the difference. I can be anywhere and you guys can hear me fine. If you got any questions about this trailer setup, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the videos. Give me a like. Don't, don't be afraid to comment below. Whether they're good comments, bad comments. Subscribe. No cost to you, and you get notified. Well, you get notified most of the time when I post a video. Thanks for watching.